You know, talking about, about migration, I totally agree with all your points. But the one I stamped three times is about economic access and opportunities. Because uh, people who migrate, as Riley said, don't do that because they want to do it. It's no fun to them, but they do it because of economic opportunity. And so we all, private sector, government, and Friends of Africa should work together and work hard to create economic hope and opportunity for our people. You know, last Christmas, uh, Donald Duke here and his uh, dear wife uh, is uh, one of the in our star leaders. And, and uh, I was with them for Christmas, and they called one of their cooks who was giving us stories about how he tried to cross to, I say, how he tried to cross the Mediterranean, and it was almost impossible. It's, how many days did he say, or more, did he say he spent in the bush? How many days? Three months. Over a year in the bush to move from Benin to, to where? Italy. Or where? No, Libya or Italy? Italy. To move to Italy. Bolivia. His story was sad. And I wish such a person could come on national television to share his own experience with people. As you, you see, you know it all. People don't move because they want to move. It's because of hardship and lack of... But you know, what you say is very important. And, and saying you should go to the TV to explain is very important. I mean, it's, it's, it's difficult or always biased in a certain way for a European leader to say that. And, and it's even biased for my people because it's speaking about African realities. And a lot of people are mixing everything and a lot of their own representations. But the most useful thing I think to do is to fight against fake news and bad publicities made by smugglers. Because what they want to do is to exploit lack of hope and opportunities. And they want to make, make themselves rich, that's the only point, by providing stories and crazy stories to these young people. And sharing these experiences at the TV and explaining that what is the reality of such a trip and that it's feasible to succeed here and have a job here is the best possible answer. I agree. Thank you. Let's clap again for Mr. President. Let's, uh, let's come here. Go ahead. That must be Mr. Okoye. Yes, sir. That's uh, Mark Okoye. Youngest commissioner in Nigeria? Yes, sir. That's you aspire right. to be youngest president, too. <laughs> um, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Chairman of uh, Tony Lumelu Foundation, Take dis microphone. distinguished uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, my name is Mark Okoye. I'm not a TEF entrepreneur, but I'm a TEF admirer for what you've done on the African continent in the areas of business and in the public sector um, and in the private sector. Um, but my, my, I share a few similarities with Mr. President. Um, I, he used to be an investment banker. I was an investment banker. He took, he, he took risks. I took a risk at 25. I went into public sector. By the time I turned 30, I was made the youngest commissioner appointed by Anambra State Governor, Governor Willie Obiano. So, sir, my questions are uh, as follows. There's not, nothing too much on uh, the policy side, but just to get to know you better and to get some insights of your story. Uh, it'd be nice to know what you classify as your biggest failures and your biggest successes. Why? Um, then the second question is, given your experience in the private sector, have you, how have you been able to leverage that um, in the public sector? And would you advise young people here um, that, that's a, that it's good to get the best of both worlds before going into uh, the public sector? Thank you very much. It's always difficult to be lucid on, on yourself and, and um, to be in a situation to say what your, your main failure could be at the point of time. But I experienced some of them. I, I first wanted to become an academic. And I failed, I failed at the very beginning to do so. And it was probably a chance and an opportunity because it pushed me to towards uh, some other perspective, and I became a civil servant. 
And after a few years, I became an investment banker. An investment banker, and after a few years, I became. I would not say a politician, but uh, I mean, I became a, a minister, and I afterwards uh, I, I ran for election. I think this, uh, this very first failures, not to get access to my my first perspective and what I had in mind, made me stronger made me stronger, because it pushed me to reinvent something else, to try again. And as I told to your colleague, not, to, not just to be, I would say, the whole stage of my own failure. I'm obsessed by that. And I think that my main success is probably what I did right after. Your main success are, are those you, you don't see. But the fact that from a private point of view and a professional point of view, I reinvented right after what I wanted to do. And you can see this actual success just on the long run. On the, long run. the big success is not just an election. It's what you built before. And the consistency of what you built before. <laughs> Because I have to say, my main bet when I run for elections in France was I always made the assumptions, and I'm deeply convinced that people are smart and see everything. And a lot of classical politicians were used just to convey classical messages, message of the party, I would say, to our people. And French people were perfectly aware of the situation, of the fact that the classical political life was framed in a crazy, I mean, following a, a crazy way. And they see we are not, when you are not sincere. And I think that's the case for all the people. When you have a lack of sincerity, when you don't build your own approach, your own proposals on a sincere basis, at a, point of time, at a point of time, people can see it. So I think that my main success is this long-term approach and the fact that I build something consistent. I strongly believe in family life and this private life balance. I strongly believe in the fact that I wanted to have a job and my own independence before going to politics. And I always try to defend ideas in which I do believe. Some of these ideas were supposed not to be compatible in the classical French political life. So my, my specialty in the French political life was the, at the same time policy, taking one idea from the left and one idea from the right. But because I thought it was much more consistent. And it's true for the reforms we, are, we did and we are making on private sector and a lot of other reforms. As for your second question regarding how to create a sort of cross-fertilization between private and public experience, I think first my private experience provided me independence. I get a job. It's something totally different. When you, are, when you have a job and you know that you can make your family happy and live, without being involved in politics, you are much more independent. And being independent from pressures, from people, for me, is the starting point to do what you believe in and to make useful things. Second, I think it provided me a better understanding of the private sector. And what I believe for Africa, I do believe it for France. The government, the state, is, has a very important role to play. Because we organize a common life, we provide education, health, and we provide protection for people when they are in a difficult situation. But we need the private sector to provide energy, opportunities, hope, and this dynamic. And understanding the private sector, this dynamic, the entrepreneurship was useful to me as a politician and now as a president, precisely to try to accelerate this trend. And I want to tell you, and that's my, that's my message, my ad moment for France. Now, in France, 
we are the country where you have the main, the largest company in Europe. We call it the CAC 40. Some of them are in this room. That's a strength. We have large companies, very strong, very solid, used to work with uh, especially African continent. That's the strength because they hire a lot of people. And I think what I want to do as a president is precisely to redevelop this win-win approach and to make them stronger. But we have, in the same time, the number one country in Europe in terms of entrepreneurship and startups creation. We have now the most vibrant ecosystem in terms of startup. And that's why I do believe in the exchange between our ecosystems. With new financing, new startups, new experience. That's why I do believe in this Digital Africa initiative. And that's probably where my experience in private life is now very useful to me. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's, uh, let's come here. Let's come here.